That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. I can't hide in the house forever. Well, not forever, just for a month. A month? I've been reading about precognitive dreams. The events they foretell usually occur within two weeks to a month after the dream. A month might as well be a lifetime. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Carefully focus on your appliance cords and plugs. Check to see if they're damaged in any way. And if so, discontinue using the appliance. Next, you should focus on water. Check so that none of your plugged-in electrical appliances can be accidentally immersed in water or any other liquid. And avoid handling an electrical appliance with wet hands or when you are standing on a wet or damp floor. And finally, your safety scan should include checking for the UL label on all electrical appliances. That label indicates that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. This is Vincent Price. Our story, although fictitious, is based on a true event, an event which our common sense tells us is impossible. And yet, it happened. Let's start at the beginning. It's the middle of the night. The house where Janice and her husband live is quiet, as is the room in which they lie sleeping. The only sounds are their steady breathing and the watchful ticking of an alarm clock on the nightstand. Suddenly the silence is shattered by an unearthly scream. Suppose someone, like Janice, experiences in a dream a future catastrophe. Is that catastrophe inevitable or can we control our own destiny? According to our conventional view of time, future events cannot exist in the present. Yet there are those who believe otherwise, who believe in a phenomenon called precognition, in which events occur in the inner psychic world, often in the form of dreams before they occur in the physical world. Can a dream prophesy the future? This is a question you might ponder as Janice's tale unfolds. I ask you to suspend your normal sense of time, if only to better understand the torment of a woman who wakens screaming because she had just witnessed her own death. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Nightmare, by Anne Heath. Our star, Joan McCall. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, chars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. 
For those hot summer days ahead, Sears is serving a refreshment of cool savings. Now through May 26th, you'll save $100 on a Sears Better Series Central Air Conditioning System with an electronic control that regulates the condenser fan to run at the unit's quietest proper speed for the outdoor temperatures. So, enjoy a cool $100 savings now. Discover Sears Central Air Conditioning in Good Series, Better Series, and Sears Best Series. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most larger Sears retail stores. A woman screams in the middle of the night. Is it just a nightmare that disrupts her sleep, or is it something more? Whatever the reason, her life will never again be the same. No! Oh, no! What is it? Huh? What's wrong? Oh, oh Dan... Oh, it was horrible. What uh, was horrible? My dream. I, I, I just had a terrible dream. Again? Oh, this one was different. Uh, I'm going to die. What do you mean, you're going to die? I'm going to be killed. Now, Janice, how do you know that? I saw it happen. It, it was so vivid, Dan. I was driving on a highway. The radio was on. I even remember the tune that was playing. It was as time goes by. The song seemed different somehow. Haunting and sad. More like a dirge than a love song. Then I saw a truck. A red pickup truck. Suddenly it came hurtling across the divider, heading right toward me. It seemed such a long time before it hit, as if time were suspended. I had time to think about everything I was about to lose, as if I were a spectator looking on. I watched that red truck crash headlong into my car and burst into flames. I heard a car horn blaring, and then, through the flames and smoke, I saw a skull, a hideous skull. That's when I woke up. Uh, that's some dream, all right. But, but darling, that's all it was. Just a dream. It didn't really happen. You're here, safe with me. But don't you see? It will happen. The dream is going to come true. Dreams don't come true, Janice. Not even good ones. My life is in danger, Dan. I know it. Hey, hey, calm down. Honey, I know you're upset, but, but you're overreacting. You've been so tired and nervous lately, I... I think I know what's causing your nightmare. What? It's this idea of yours going back to school to earn a law degree. I'm sure it's the workload you've taken on that's affecting you this way. A lot of law students have nightmares, you know. It's all that pressure. And you're under even more trying to run a household at the same time. And try to go back to sleep. Things will look a lot better in the morning. <laughs> Dr. Green, I was so terrified. If only Dan had just put his arms around me instead of being so sensible. Well, I understand your feelings. Your husband failed to grasp the serious effect of such nightmares on the psyche. Men often don't remember their dreams, so they don't attach much importance to them. A pity, because dreams can tell us so much about ourselves. Can they, Doctor? Do you think Dan could be right? Could tension and overwork have caused my nightmare? Oh, it's too soon to tell. I must know more about the fabric of your life to discover the meaning of your dream. Did you tell anyone else about your dream? Yes, I did. I didn't fall asleep until almost dawn. I must have slept through the alarm because when I woke up, Dan was gone. I'd missed my morning class, so I decided to stay home. But soon the empty house began to close in on me. I, I couldn't get the nightmare out of my mind. Like a frightened child, I wanted my mother. I wanted her to make it all go away. Hello? Hi, Mom. I'm so glad you're home. I need to talk to you. What is it, dear? You sound upset. Have you had a fight with Dan? No, no, of course not. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, then what's wrong? I had a terrible nightmare last night. A nightmare? What about? Oh, Mom, it was so awful. I dreamed I was in an accident, a car accident. There was a red truck. It crashed into my car. There were flames everywhere. Oh, no. What's the matter? Oh, oh, this can't be. Not again. Mom, tell me, what is it? Well, I... 
I've never told this to anyone. Told what? Before your father died, I... I had a dream. I saw an open grave. There was someone shoveling dirt into the hole. Oh, the dreadful sound those stones made as they fell on the casket. I looked up, and there was the headstone. Your father's name was carved on it. Oh, my God. Two weeks later, your father had his heart attack. May God rest his soul. Why didn't you tell me this before? Oh, but you were so young. Only six years old. And by the time you were older, it... Well, it was over. Part of the past. I didn't see any reason to upset you. Well, I wish you had told me. What possible good would it have done? I don't know. I just think I should have been told. Oh, maybe you're right. If I had understood what my dream was trying to tell me, I might have been able to prevent your father's death. But all these years, I felt so guilty. If only I did... Stop torturing yourself, Mom. You couldn't have known. I'll never stop feeling his death shouldn't have happened. Janice, you've got to promise me something. What? Promise me you won't go anywhere in the car. I can't do that. I have to go to school. I have a life to live. Janice, please, you mustn't. I've heard about people who've had these dreams. Many were able to avoid disaster by taking precautions. I, I'm so afraid. I don't want to lose you. Please. Don't cry, Mom. It'll be all right. Please, don't cry. I didn't want to believe there was a connection between my mother's dream and mine. But I wondered if she could have prevented my father's death. Was it up to me to change my future? And if so, how could I avert tragedy without ruining my life? That night, Dan had to work late. So I went to bed early. I was exhausted and fell asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. Then... yourself in the luxury of Sears Super Plus bath towels. Just one touch will tell you they're super thick and luxurious with more combed cotton terry loops per square inch than any other towel we sell. Each towel weighs over a pound. They're Sears largest terry bath towels. Super thick and absorbent. No wonder they're called Super Plus. Available now in brilliant solids or patterns. No, maybe so. It's a sunny bunch of summer for girls on the go. Summer starts for your daughter with Easy Care halters, tanks, tees, and jogger shorts in colorful teams to switch around all summer. And each sunny bunch piece has a sunny saying and character screen print. Tops, shorts, and play sets to pack a pretty punch. When it comes to packing sportswear, the choice is sunny bunch. Jump into summer with sunny bunch funwear for your girls in sizes 7 to 14. Looks like it's going to be a hot one today with 90% humidity. It's the kind of weather that makes you want to drop into Sears for the most popular blend underwear. Why? Because it's a blend of 65% polyester for strength and 35% combed cotton for softness and absorbency. With a two-way stretch for the comfortably snug fit men appreciate, especially in the warm, active months ahead. So drop in and discover Sanfronet t-shirts, undershirts, and briefs. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Doctor, I'd never had the same dream twice, never. This premonition of death just came crashing into my life, it seemed out of my control. I was sickened by the thought that it would happen that I couldn't keep it from happening. And your attempt to get comfort from your mother only increased your anxiety. It wasn't her fault. Think of the guilt she's been carrying around all these years. Oh, yes, many of us torment ourselves unnecessarily. Then you don't believe my father's death could have been avoided? Well, I'd rather not say just yet. Please go on. Can you remember what happened the next day? The next day was Wednesday. 
I don't have any classes that day and usually play tennis with a girlfriend. I didn't want to go, but I thought the exercise might help take my mind off the nightmare. I got as far as the garage. I can't do it. I can't even get in the car. I'll have to call Stacy. Hello? Hi, Stacy. It's Janice. Hi, Janice. I hope you're not going to say you can't play today. It's my turn to win. Well, um, Are I... Are you sick? No. No, I'm not sick. <laughs> well, then what's your excuse at the last minute? Well, I didn't say I couldn't make it today. It's just that, uh, my car won't start, and Dan took the other one to the office. <laughs> Why didn't you say so in the first place? I'll come pick you up. Be right over. Bye now. Bye. Jan, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. I didn't get much sleep last night, that's all. How does Dan feel about your going back to school? Well, he, uh, he thinks I should take some time off. Uh, figures. Man is basically... Daisy, pull over, quick! Why, is a cop behind us? No, no, it's a truck. A red truck. A what? Oh, it's coming closer. Daisy, stop the car, please! Okay, you can. Pull over. Oh, he, he's gone past... Janice, what's wrong? Nothing. It's nothing. Nothing? You just about left your seat when you saw that truck. Why did it frighten you like that? Stacy, is the radio on? No. I never turn it on when there's traffic. Do you hear music? No, I don't hear anything. Listen, can you hear it now? Janice, have you gone crazy? It's stopped now. You're not acting this way just because you're tired. Please tell me what's the matter. I'm not feeling very well. Would you mind if we didn't play today? I, I don't think I'm up to it. Oh, of course not. I'll take you home. Maybe we can play on Saturday instead. I I'm sure I'll feel better by then. I, I have to feel better. Seeing that red truck shook me terribly. I felt pursued, like a helpless animal that had somehow learned it was going to be slaughtered. Deep within my being, there was a clock ticking my time away. I hadn't told Dan about the nightmare returning. I knew I couldn't tell him about the red truck or the song. I found myself dreading his return that evening. How are you feeling? Fine. Just, just fine. Honey, are you sure you're okay? You... You seem so... T I'm fine. I'm just tired, that's all. It's that nightmare you had, isn't it? No. Well, yes. You know, Jan, the school thing is just not working out. It's taking too big a toll on you. Dan, please. I didn't even go to school today. But you know how important it is for me to do something useful with my life. I know it is, hon, but don't I mean something to you? What kind of a question is that? Of course you do. I don't know. When we got married, we promised each other always to be there when the other one needed us. But you've been so busy with school and now with this nightmare thing. Darling, I, I hardly know you anymore. How do you know my dream isn't a premonition? I just know. Things like that just don't happen in the real world. I talked to my mother yesterday. Oh, no, your mother. Wait, let me tell you what she said. Okay. What did she have to say this time? She told me she had a premonition of Daddy's death in a dream. What? It's true. Well, why didn't she tell you this before? She was afraid to. She was guilty. Honey... You know what a neurotic your mother is, and these last few years she's been getting a little senile. She probably made the whole thing she up. She didn't. She told me. All right, all right. But whatever she said, true or not, I don't want you to end up like her, always worrying and afraid of everything. Dan, don't you understand? I am afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to die. <laughs> Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. This is Lucille Ball, here to make a personal appeal to every American. Since the 1880s, the American Red Cross has been stepping in when there's been big trouble, like a hurricane. But nobody has to tell you the Red Cross is there when a hurricane strikes. So let's talk about the other Red Cross, your neighborhood Red Cross. 
They teach kids to swim. Kid, that's good, Eddie. And they train about every lifeguard on every beach. It's possible to look into it. We can get in touch with the local chapter. They help again. veterans get on their feet. They help people relocate after fires. Are you comfortable? Okay, now relax. They collect and distribute blood. They give a hand to the older folks in your town and do scores of other jobs. It's running very nice. What? It's easy to see why we've got to have Red Cross, and only you can keep Red Cross ready for the little emergencies in your neighborhood and the big ones. Help keep Red Cross ready. Lucky? Yeah, I was lucky. It happened in my own living room, and Rusty knew how to do CPR. What's that? Uh, let's see, uh, CPR stands for Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, and Rusty learned it at school. They teach him how to do chest compression and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing for people who've had heart attacks with electric shocks. You mean your kid saved your life? Well, he kept me going until the ambulance arrived. I probably wouldn't be here now if Rusty hadn't known CPR. Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, or CPR was pioneered and developed by the American Heart Association to sustain lives until advanced cardiac support arrives. A person using CPR pumps blood for a heart that is stopped and breathes for lungs that can't. The American Heart Association wants everyone to learn CPR. Contact us to find out where and when CPR is taught in your community. We're fighting for your life. I knew Dan was trying to help me, but his inability to accept or understand anything outside of his well-ordered world made me feel so alone. I tried not to give in to my fear like my mother had, but the nightmare kept returning, haunting me. Its warning possessed my mind even during the daytime. I couldn't bring myself to go to school that week, which pleased Dan. And I forgot all about the tennis game I'd promised Stacy until she telephoned on Saturday morning. I hated to disappoint her again, so I called a cab. When I arrived, Stacy was already on the court, eager to get started. Good shot, Stacy. You're too good for me today. I don't think I can finish the set. Oh, I did play well, but you're way off your game. What's wrong, Jan? Well, is it that red truck that upset you so much the other day? Yes, it was. You see, I've been having this dream, uh, a terrible dream. Nightmare, huh? Does it have anything to do with double faulting? No, it's worse than that. Hey, this is serious, isn't it? What was your dream about? Oh, Stacy, it was awful. And it keeps coming back. Oh, come on. Let's go up to the clubhouse. You can tell me all about it over an iced tea. Gee, that's a terrible dream, Jan. I, I had no idea. Since that first night, I, I haven't been able to eat. I haven't been to class. I should be studying for midterms, but I can't seem to concentrate. I'm so afraid I'll be killed. You poor thing. I don't blame you for being upset. But as for your nightmare coming true... You don't believe that dreams can foretell the future? <laughs> well, if they did, I'd be Chrissy Everett by now instead of Mrs. Robert Stanton, housewife. Haven't you ever heard of people who dream of someone's death and then it happens? Well, I guess I have, but I always thought that was just supernatural stuff. Dennis? Dennis! Mom, what are you doing here? Oh, I've been calling all morning. I, I couldn't believe you'd gone out. I called Professor Peterson and he said you weren't in class, so I came here. Hello, Marion. Stacy, why did you let her leave the house? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Mom, I can't hide in the house forever. Well, not forever. Just for a month. A month? I've been reading about precognitive dreams. The events they foretell usually occur within two weeks to a month after the dream. A month might as well be a lifetime. Do you really believe Janice's life is in danger, Marion? Yes, I do. But if she'll only try to protect herself, I know she'll be all right. Oh, you must be careful, darling. I will, Mom. Now, promise me you won't do this again. Mom. Promise me. <sighs> okay, I promise. Sit down, Mary, and have some nice tea with us. Oh, thank you. 
Well, I'll sit for a minute, but I'm, I'm too jittery to drink anything. Hmm. Do you hear that? What? That music. Where is it coming from? I don't hear anything. It's the same song, the one in my nightmare. You must be imagining. No, no, it can't be my imagination. It's it's so clear. It's... What's the matter? It, it stopped. What is this song you hear? It's the same one that was playing on the car radio right before... Before the crash. What's the name of it? It's As Time Goes By. <gasps> oh, oh, no. Mom, what is it? Does it mean something to you? That was your father's favorite song. He used to play it on the piano. I was stunned by my mother's revelation. But I tried not to let her know. She was so upset herself. She didn't want to leave me, but I insisted she go home. After Mom left, Stacy made a suggestion that reinforced my growing fear that I was losing my mind. Jan, I'm worried about you. Maybe you should see someone. See someone? What do you mean? I mean, well, you seem so upset, and hearing that song... Maybe if you saw a psychiatrist. Do you think I'm crazy? I didn't say that. But you do need help. Can't you see that? Yes, I guess I do need help. If you don't want to see a psychiatrist, why don't you talk to Reverend Michaels? Maybe he can help. But I haven't been to church in so long. I don't, I don't know if he'd see me. Oh, of course he will. I'll drive you over. Not knowing where else to turn, I let Stacy drive me to see Reverend Michaels. As the car pulled up in front of the rectory, the pastor was outside in the garden. Cultivating roses was his favorite pastime. Mom used to say it was almost as important to him as saving souls. Why, Janice, my dear, how good to see you again. It's been so long. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, come look at this Charlotte Armstrong. It's a perfect specimen. Uh, there. Look at that color. Have you ever seen anything so glorious? It's beautiful. Uh, Janice, you seem troubled. What is it, my dear? Reverend Michaels. I I'm so frightened. I've, uh... Been having this nightmare. Well, now, first come, let's sit down. There's a bench right over here. Uh, uh, those old bones of mine are starting to creak. Uh, now, uh, tell me about this nightmare of yours. And then, through the flames and smoke, I saw a skull. Dear God, what a fearful dream. I'm sure it's an omen. Oh, Reverend, you must help me. There, there. Now, what makes you think this dream is prophetic? I don't know. It's just a feeling. And my mother... Ah, your mother, such a good woman. She dreamed of my father's funeral two weeks before he died. She... She never told me that. She was afraid to tell anyone. Reverend Michaels, I'm so confused. I... I don't know what or, or who to believe. My husband insists dreams don't come true. But what about my mother's dream? She's sure there's some connection between her premonition and my nightmare. So you're torn between two opposing points of view. I can understand your torment. My mother thinks, that is, she hopes, that if I'm careful, I can prevent the accident from happening. Do you think that's possible? Uh, well, that's a question of free will, isn't it? It is. God gave us the ability to make our own decisions, but ultimately, he is the only one who possesses knowledge of the future. Then you don't believe in precognitive dreams. What you're asking is, do we have the power of God? No. Now, I'm afraid no man or woman has that kind of power. Our fate is in God's hands and, and his alone. Oh. Don't despair, child. If you have faith in God, you'll be saved. If only I could believe it were that simple. It is, Janice, it is. You must trust me. Now, uh, tomorrow's Sunday. Why don't you come to my service? I know it'll make you feel better. I'm not sure I can. No excuses now. And try not to worry. I'll pray for you. The thought that my life was in God's hands only deepened my anxiety about the future. I couldn't help feeling it would take more than prayers to save me. I walked a few blocks home from the rectory. As I approached my house, it was almost dark. Then I saw something that made me stop short. Parked nearby was an old pickup truck. 
My body stiffened. My eyes strained to make out the shadowy forms looming from the back. Just when I'd realized it was the gardener's truck, a strange thing happened. Through the window on the driver's side drifted what looked like a vapor of smoke. It glowed with an eerie light. Suddenly the light became a glare. There was a flash from two luminous eyes and a ghostly head appeared. <gasps> and then the head changed into a skull. Oh, no! No! I ran across the lawn and into the house. Phantoms from my nightmare had plagued me, preying on my sanity. But this last horrifying vision plunged me into a new kind of terror. Numb with fear, I confined myself to the house. I became a mindless inmate in a prison of my own making. Or was it a madhouse? Janice, you can't go on like this. You've lost so much weight. You haven't been out of that robe in a week. What are you trying to do to yourself? I'm not trying to do anything. I can't help it. I'm just so afraid. Honey, you've got me worried sick. I want you to do something for me. What is it? I want you to see a psychiatrist. You too? You think I'm mentally ill, don't you? Of course not. But you need someone to get you over this. No one can help me. Darling, you've got to try. All right, Dan. I'll do whatever you say. Good girl. Now, I found out about a Dr. Green from Frank. Frank? Surely you haven't forgotten Frank from the office? Oh, yes, from the office. He recommends this Dr. Green highly. I've got the number in my wallet. Uh, here it is. I'll call this afternoon. Honey, please, do it now. Before it's too late. All right. Hello? My name is Janice Craig. I'd like to make an appointment to see Dr. Green. Nearly everyone at our party mentioned our new Sears Dream Supreme carpeting. Didn't anyone say anything about my rutabaga dip? Marvin said Dream Supreme looks so thick and luxurious. He loved its velvety soft plush pile. What about my rutabaga dip? Eloise adored the color. Of my rutabaga dip? I told her that avocado lime is just one of Dream Supreme's 20 lustrous colors, and when Doris heard that Dream Supreme is so reasonably priced and treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector... Okay, what about my tuna fish upside down cake? Dream Supreme carpeting in most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, chars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. This is my first night camping with my family of five. Now I'm really glad I packed my Sears family-style tent. It's Sears' best tent, tested by Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to conquer Mount Everest. This tent stands six feet nine inches in the center and has a sewn-in ten by fourteen foot floor. It sleeps eight, plenty of room for my family, and even the dog. We like the windows that can be zipped shut from the inside and this large front canopy. Sears' best family-style tent is built to be lived in, and if it's good enough for Hillary, it's good enough for my family at most larger Sears retail stores. Vincent Price again. And here's the concluding act of The Nightmare. So that's how I came to be here, Dr. Green. I've told you everything that's happened since the first nightmare. Well, I'm glad you decided to see me. I only wish you'd come sooner. It might have saved you a lot of anguish. What do you mean? Well, I think your dream has a very logical explanation. You do? Oh, Doctor, I want so much to believe that. Well, you see, Freud felt that all dreams are a form of wish fulfillment. Are you saying that I wanted to die? Oh, no, on the contrary. The fear that has been paralyzing you is not really produced by the accident in your dream. I, I don't understand. <clears throat> Let me see if I can make it clearer. In anxiety dreams, the anxiety comes from a source other than a perceivable one. What source? I mean, what could possibly make me dream anything so horrible? <clears throat> Well, dreams such as yours are often a form of punishment. But why? In such dreams, an unconscious wish is being fulfilled. 
a wish that the dreamer be punished for a forbidden desire. In your case, a desire to become a lawyer against the supposed better judgment of your husband. But what about my mother's dream? She did foresee my father's death, didn't she? Oh, you said your father died of a heart attack. Yes, he did. Well, more than likely, your mother was suppressing a deep anxiety about the condition of your father's heart. In her dream, this anxiety simply broke through and staged his death. There was no precognition. Then you don't believe I'm going to die? Oh, eventually, yes, but not as you <laughs> saw it in your dream. Yours is a classic case of psychoneurosis brought on by an unconscious desire to punish. The only unusual aspect here is the extent to which your dream has traumatized you. The conflict you felt about your decision to return to school must have been immense, even though it was largely unconscious. What higher price could you pay for your crime than death itself? Your explanation sounds so logical. <laughs> Logic and reason are the best tools psychology has to repair a damaged psyche. Doctor, will I have the nightmare again? Well, now that you are aware of its causes, your dream probably will not return. But you must get back on your feet again. You must learn to deal openly with the conflicts in your life. Otherwise, your unconscious mind will seek another form of punishment. Next time, you might not be able to recover, even with my help. It all seems so clear now. I will get back on my feet. <laughs> For the first time in two weeks, I feel like I can. I don't know how to thank you, Doctor. Well, you can thank me by recovering and staying well. I'll try. I will. Oh, good, good. No, I'm afraid our time is up for today. Just remember, I'm here if you need me. Thank you. But I'm sure I won't need your help anymore. Goodbye, then. And good luck. Goodbye, Dr. Green. <laughs> Craig, may I help you? Yes, I'd like to speak to Mr. Craig. May I ask who's calling? It's Mrs. Craig. Oh, hello, Mrs. Craig. Just one moment. I'll put you through to his office. Hi, hon. How are you doing? Much better, darling. Much, much better. Ah, uh, you sound better. How was your session with Dr. Green? It was, as you would say, very productive. He made me see why I had the dream and why it had such an effect on me. Oh, hon, I'm glad. I'm sorry I've been so hard to live with. You know, you may have been right. Maybe I was taking on too much too soon. <laughs> you do sound better. Uh, you don't know how relieved I am to hear you talking like this. Hey, how about driving into town and meeting me for lunch? You mean today? Yes, today, right now. Uh, you're not still afraid to drive the car, are you? No. No, 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 of course not. Uh, then it's a date. I'll even take an extra half hour for lunch. After all, this is a special occasion, uh, Right? Right. I'll meet you at uh, Chez Renee's at one o'clock. And Janice? Yes? Wear that blue dress, the one with the uh, lace collar. Uh, you're a knockout in that dress. All right. Uh, see you at one, then. Au revoir, ma chérie. Goodbye, Dan. <laughs> I better answer that phone. It might be Dan again. Hello? Janice, what took you so long to answer? I was just on my way out, Mom. Out? Oh, no, you mustn't. Don't worry. Everything's all right now. Dr. Green explained my nightmare. It was just an anxiety dream. An anxiety dream? Yes, I haven't time to explain. I'll tell you all about it later. No, no, it's important that you don't go out today. Mom, I just told you everything's okay. Janice, listen to me. <sighs> okay, but please hurry. Do you know what day this is? No. Today is the day your father passed away. No. It was only a dream. Dreams don't come true. I saw an open grave, your father's name on the headstone. I always thought that was just supernatural stuff. No, you must be careful. Don't go anywhere in the car. Our fate is in God's hands. Have faith and you will be saved. No, don't go out, Janice. Just for a month. Your dream has a logical explanation. Things like that don't happen in the real world. No, 
Don't go out today. You mustn't. You are not going to die. You must get back on your feet. Today's the day your father passed away. Don't go. Don't go. No. I can't live in my mother's world. That would be the punishment I'd never recover from. I have to go. Highway up ahead, all those cars speeding toward their certain destinations. <gasps> Might as well be a raging river. I have to overcome this obstacle, or I'll never feel normal again. <sighs> I'm so tense. I'll never make it this way. Steady now, steady. Just stay in the right lane. Let them all go by. Nothing to be afraid of. It's just a road. It was only a dream. Only a dream. <gasps> What's that? Oh, oh, a huge trailer truck. Oh, and he's bearing down on me. Why doesn't he go around? Why are his lights flashing? He's closing fast. I'd better pull off before he overruns me. Oh, no! No, no! He's not slowing down! Oh, he's gone. I've got to get a grip on myself. Maybe the radio will help. alert. I've got to be steady. Ready, just in case. In case what? <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to die. <sighs> oh, no. A bed that looks like... Oh, it is. <laughs> it's a red pickup truck. <gasps> it's coming closer. It's coming closer. It's moving into the passing lane. It's... It's... It's starting to swerve this way. It's, 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 it's going by. Oh, oh, there's the street where I turn off. Thank God. It's over. My nightmare is over. Janice, you look wonderful. I feel wonderful. How was the ride in? Terrifying. I can admit that to you now because I made it. But for a while, I didn't think I would. It was the longest ride of my life. I'm proud of you, hon. I know what a grip this thing's had on you. How, how real it seemed. Now do you realize it was only a dream? Yes, Dan. It was only a dream. A terrible dream. I think a toast is in order. A toast? A toast to you, my beautiful wife. Who's come back to me safe and sound. <laughs> Let's forget these last two weeks ever happened. <laughs> the best idea I've heard today. A fresh start. And to celebrate, I think we should do something special. Like what? It's been so long since we've gone anywhere together. How would you like to drive up the coast to Carmel this weekend? Oh, Dan, that sounds wonderful. We could stay in that little inn, the one with the fireplaces in the room. I'm way ahead of you. I already made the reservations. I can't imagine anything I'd like better. You've made me so happy, darling. No happier than I am. I, I feel like a new person. <laughs> More like the old one. You seem like your old self again, Janice. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to work. But first, another toast. To our weekend in Carmel. May the time pass quickly until then. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
And here's another tune to bring back memories on our cavalcade of oldies but goodies, a popular song from the 40s made famous by the movie Casablanca. Let's turn back the clock and remember, as time goes by... to do the dishes. Oh, no. Now is a great time to let Sears do the dishes because you'll save $50 on selected portable and under-the-counter dishwashers now through May 26th. Help save on energy while they work for you, too, since the water miser cycle uses less water than normal wash and the power miser option dries with cool, forced air. So save $50 and let Sears do the dishes. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Almost summer, and there I was, still in my winter sports shirts, feeling the heat. So I went to Sears and discovered a summer sports shirt collection. Some interlock knits caught my eye with full button fronts in solids and patterns, and they're short-sleeved. This is a style I can feel comfortable in. Better yet, the interlock knits of polyester are easy care. My wife likes that. Now I'm looking forward to those lazy summer days ahead, wearing my new crisp-looking shirts from Sears. This Terry outfit I'm wearing, from Sears, has all the energy of summer. But what was once, just for running, is now charged up fashion for your whole sporty day. Terry tanks, v-necks, racing, jogging, and boxer shorts in a range of washable colors and styles. In misses and junior sizes, 9 to $12 for the tops, just 6 to $7 for the shorts. Look like a pro at having fun. And Terry, shoo, prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Nightmare was written by Anne Heath, produced and directed by Fletcher Marco. Your host was Vincent Price. Our star was Joan McCall. Featured in the cast were Joe Maross, Hans Conried, Irene Tedrow, Rhoda Williams, and Howard Culver. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you in the market for a used car? If you are, it would be wise to shop around until you get a feel for the market. It's important for you to find out if the car is covered by a warranty. A used car warranty is limited. For example, it may cover the first thousand miles or 30 days. Remember, however, the warranty is as good as the dealer who backs it. And you check his reliability with your local Better Business Bureau. Also, remember that careful inspection is the key to enjoying a used car. Be sure and look for rust. Check the tires, the shock absorbers, and the operating controls. And incidentally, it's also a good idea to take a test drive. You see, by giving the car the once-over before you buy it, you're protecting yourself against a faulty purchase and a lot of headaches after you've bought it. This has been a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Join hands with people everywhere. Each of us can do our share in cares for say for children. This year, people of all nations are joining hands to improve the lives of the world's needy children. Through care, you can provide the families of these children with the means to grow their own food, to build medical facilities, safer water systems, and schools. Tomorrow's world is in our hands. Help make it a better place for all the children.
children. Please send your check or money order to CARE, Crusade for Children Overseas, Box 576, New York 10016. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Let's listen. Suddenly everything is oriental. Mysticism, martial arts, flower arranging, food. Oh, well, at least they have not tried to deal with the complications of Chinese opera yet. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.